Hi there, this is Linda D'Antonio of Seaporium in Cape Cod in Massachusetts. And we are an authorized Iron Orchid Designs retailer as well as a Dixie Bell retailer. And we're so excited about this new product. It's a whole new category um, from Iron Orchid Designs. It's paint inlays. Unlike a transfer, it's actual paint on the paper. And you're going to transfer it you're going to inlay it into wet paint. We show you in the video how this all works. And again, this is all new to us. We might be tweaking this as, as time goes by and people are trying all these new paint brands. We're working with the Dixie Bell Chalk Mineral Paint. This will not be a great product for the silk line of paints from Dixie Bell. Um, it does need some open time to work best. Um, so. You know, the more open time you get with your paint, the be better off you will be. So chalk mineral paints, chalk paints, um, clay paints, all that, okay? Um, I did do a second application. You, you know, it's not just a one-time application, you guys, all right? This can be used three, and Josie even got a fourth use out of it. It just, the more you use it, the more faded it gets. So let me show you. This was the, the one we're doing on our nightstand in this project. This is Rose Chintz. This was my first application. I put it on kind of a thick process, and this was put on with the paper dry. You'll see the difference when we do the video. This is a second application. Look at that. You get some of the blue from the other side, and then you get a kind of a more vintagey feel of the actual transfer. There, I did try a third application on this little strip here. Um, I was being a miser because this was, you know, my very, very first project using these new, this brand new innovative um, product. Um, however, I painted the wrong side, and so I think that did have a, um, an issue that gave me an issue here. And just for for demo purposes, it wasn't worth getting a whole new sheet out. And then here is the um, indigo floral. This was my absolute first application it came out drop dead gorgeous and because they're paint the actual paint when you get like little gaps like here where the the flat meets the molding i did have a little gap um, varnish is still drying but um, you can activate your paint with a fine tip brush and actually make um, the little mishaps and seams disappear look at this the inside, because this is, was our first application, the inside is, is our second application for it, but the frame is a first application. So you get the dark of the um, of the of the transfer of the inlay on the outside because it's the first time that's been used. Okay, so let's talk about let's see, let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to give you a, a, a brief rundown on the prep, and I'm telling you it's fast. And then we're going to slow it down, and we're going to give you detailed information on how I, what I was thinking when I was doing this. Again, this nightstand is my second application, you guys. This is the second time I used it, and it came out so, so pretty, right? And then going against the books, See that side of that drawer? That is varnish on there. That's a varnish. All right, that's totally against the, the, the rules um, because it does, again, it likes that, that open time paint, uh, water-based, you know, chalk, clay kind of paint. And so, um, but I played with it. I probably won't be able to get a third use out of that because what I did on the drawers, and you'll see in the video, is it was a second application. So what you see here, that's the first application. And then this is afterwards. I did a second application on the varnish. All right. It's all an experiment, and we're so excited um, to, to bring this to you. We hope you're excited too. You know what? You can shop right there at seaporium.com, and you can follow us on the social sites. We'd greatly appreciate it. We're a small business, and we'd appreciate any help you can, you can offer us. All right, I hope you enjoy the video.
already um, we've already sanded this down, and, and I cleaned it down with the um, white lightning, and we're ready to paint. Now, when we tack sand, all you need to do is give a little tack to the surface, okay? Um, I'm not going to fix all the nicks and the dings because this little, I'm going to be putting on the um, brand new Iron Orchid Design paint inlay in rose chintz. It's gorgeous, but we're going to give this um, a, a top coat and, um, out, or, or a base coat, I should say, and two coats everywhere else. I'm only going to put the um, pattern on the, sh the top and the shelf. So we will have to paint uh, or tape around this little edge here, just because. And I mean, I've played with other colors, um, but I want to try this new Juniper Dixie Belle. Uh, Juniper, it's from the fall colors. We have one left in the Juniper, um, but other than that, it's, it's, um, it's going to be hard to find because they're, they're sold out like uh, so many places. So you can go online and uh, Dixie Bell um, Paint, I think it's DixieBellPaint.com, and um, and you can search uh, retailers in your area. Now they do it; um, they give priority to the elite retailers, and then to the premier retailers, and then to people like us. So make sure you're scrolling all the way down um, to get um, the full area uh, for yourself. I have pretty much everything that they carry, and that's a lot. So um, even though they're not listed up on the top, doesn't mean that they don't have everything, okay? It's just that we don't have three of all the smalls and two of the medium size and, you know, everyone does it to different degrees. All right, so like I said, this has been tacked. I cleaned it um, down with white lightning and I used a little scrubby, uh, it's hard to tell in the video, I used a little scrubby and then um, to, to scrub in and, and, and kind of get any kind of polish or anything like that off with the, it's basically a TSP uh, in the white lightning um, with a degreaser in it. And then um, I wiped it down a couple of times with a, um, a, a wet rag. And so we should be ready to go. I didn't um, put any boss on here. We could have put a clear boss. I think I might want to do a little distressing. I think this green is going to be drop dead gorgeous on uh, uh, with a little distressing. Um, we can even maybe do a little wax. We'll see how it goes. And I think the rose chintz is going to look great on this too. So I'm going to, I like to start at the top, but for the purpose of the video, we're just going to, going to go here and you don't have to paint the undersides. But when the people are loading it in their um, in their truck here, or whatever and you're moving, or whatever you do, it's, it it just it doesn't take much just to kind of do that. Now, will I paint the underside of a piece? Generally not. But when you're painting, you know, you get these little spots where the the brush goes up onto the other surface, and um, and it looks a little unsightly. And when you do move it and it's upside down, you see it. And it's just a little surface, so I'll just give it a little brush out. Now, you see here, I'm not going to go for full coverage. I want this to be warm and worn out and vintagey and all that. All right. When you're coming into where edges meet here, the flat edge against the horizontal edge here, the vertical edge against the horizontal, just take your brush. You want to get it where it it flattens out and then you can kind of get it right into that crease and pull out. Just get those bristles flat. That's the most important part. Now this is only first coat. So I'm going to leave all this the way it is. And the second coat, um, and, and it's actually got some really good coverage, you guys. Um, this is again, this is a limited edition color. And what I like about this particular color is it's of their greens, the olive greens, um, this one, I really hope that they, they, they keep because the other olive greens are, are, are good. Um, and I almost, I really almost did them. Um, I almost did dried sage. I almost did Spanish moss, but, um, this one really won out because, um, it's got more of the green coming through. Um, the other greens, yes, I, in the, in the paint sample, it does look more greeny. But this just has just a little bit happier of a green. 
All right, and maybe in the next clip, I'll remember, because that'll be tomorrow. In my time, that's tomorrow. Um, in the next clip, I'll try to remember to have the paint swatches so you can see the difference between the dried sage, juniper, and um, Spanish moss. So I am, this is really kind of dry brushing, but you know, I'm going for a warm, worn look. And it'll kind of explain some of the nicks and dings in here. There's a purpose to everything, you guys, okay? Everything has its purpose. I did not boss. I don't think we're going to have a lot of problems with bleed. There are a couple spots that have knots. I'm hoping that the varnish they have here is, um, is going to hold them back. And it wasn't because I was lazy. I had time. I just don't think I needed it. Time will tell. All right, so I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing to the rest of the piece, and then we'll see you at the next clip. So now I want to show you, we've got the full coverage on top, pretty much, from what I can see at this angle. I will see it tomorrow when I get it down, right? But um, when we get all these little details, okay, I wanted to show you, you get the paint in there and then brush it out. Get the paint into your, into your, whatever it is that you're having, you know, a possibility of, you know, uh, what's the disconnect, all right? And again, you don't have to. I'm just going to get a quick little stroke down there. Just get the paint on in these difficult areas. And again, I'm doing underneath here because I keep picturing if someone's looking for something on the floor and they look up in here and they see the brown edge. Um, I don't know if that just, it's just my, my personal, my personal tragedy there, I guess. I don't, I don't like. It's just something I do. I always do the scallops, even on the bottom of a piece. It's just a thing. If you see it at a weird angle, I keep thinking maybe, you know, like at this right, angle. So we've got the full coverage. The I just want to go over what we do in these little details. Did, so. If That's I am getting I a little dry, I can you. always wet my surface or I can wet right, my brush. Again, Either way. Get the paint on. I like to make sure, I like to try seamless. to keep the, you don't, um, you don't have to do these edges, but you're going to get the brush to something in there that's very anyways. clean. So I try so not to use like my, the water in my spray showing, from my sink I just because do the it. water here is notor notoriously not great. Just, just so, um, I use my water jug here at work, but you know, everyone's situation is different just because, I mean, there's minerals in your water. And it's just on the safe side to not mix with the minerals in your paint. That's all. All right. Typically, I also like to go kind of just down this band here. That's just what I do. Doesn't have to be, I don't have to worry that this is raw wood and it's going to bleed. This is just a gesture. I don't, you could tape it off if you wanted it to be perfect. Again, I'm just doing the gesture since I did the sides. Okay. So you get the paint on. I love this continuous fine mister. And I like to go thin. Oh, that was a little much. A um, little much for the water. I like to put the layers on thin. I'd rather have that and less sanding after. Sanding, I said the word, you guys. I said it. Um, but trust me, even if the least you do is you take a finishing pad to this, you'll see, you'll see. I'm going to talk to you about it. Um, 
the worst case scenario is you just take a little damp finishing sand, uh, finishing pad to this. It's going to make a huge difference in your clay paint or your, your mineral or your, your chalk paints. Just not for silk because silk does not, is no bueno with water. All right. So that's how I roll. You know, you just get the paint on, get it in the grooves, and then follow it out. Get it in the grooves and then make pretty, okay, before it dries. All right, we'll see you in the next clip. So here we are. We're at the stage where we're ready to, to put some paint down. I applied some tape to half of the back of this little cubby, and half does not have tape. The reason being is I just want to see. Um, we're going to be putting this on wet paint, and we're going to be wetting the back of it. This is a chalk style paint. It does, Dixie Bell products do have some polymers in it. They are acrylic base. It's not all, um, you know, clay. Clay paints, I think, are just are, are simple, just a, a, a very simple non-polymer blend. Um, Dixie Bell will um, eventually cure. So we have to be um, a little bit more careful with our application than say, you know, some of these other paints. Um, it doesn't discourage me because I like the durability. I like how Dixie Bell works and, I, and it works. This works just fine. We're just going to be timing things. That's all. All right. But since it is a paint and we just applied it yesterday, it's going to be a little water reactive. It's only, t it's been only been not even 24 hours. So, um, if I apply just the paint here and if I just wet it on this surface, it shouldn't really get onto the sidewall. And if it does, I haven't put a second coat on the sides so I can give it a sand and, and fix that really quick. That's the reason why I'm doing this part first and not, and not coating my second coat on the rest of the project. All right, so this is what we're working with. It's the Rose Chintz Paint Inlay. It is similar, I mean, it's like you're, you're kind of rubbing it on and it's coming off of a backing, um, but not all the way, you guys. You can get like two, maybe three applications of this. All right, we're gonna try a second application on the sides of the drawers with just varnish, and that's gonna be really tricky, but hey, I'm in for the challenge, all right? Um, so this is the one pattern. We have another pattern. This, this is the indigo floral. Love, love, love this. It's a nice crisp, kind of a more modern, um, take on things. And then this one's vintagey, romantic, and so pretty. Rose chintz. Okay. And I was telling you, I was going to show you the paint colors. All right. I did remember, I remembered. So here's collard greens, very dark. This one's not bad, Spanish moss, but it does have more of a tan tone to it. It actually looks better in the screen. And then this is dried sage. It's the same really as the Spanish moss, just even more muted and lighter. So, um, you know, we, we've got all this on, uh, available for you. It's in stock, it's online, it's in store. So you guys, you can get your paint inlays and, and don't worry about we're, if, we're, if we're back stock, we're going to get it back in. We're going to get it in for you. Um, I, I did not get a large order because I needed to play with it and it's doing wonderful. So I'm going to be placing another order. All right. So these, the actual sheets, okay. That's actual paint. If I got this wet right now, if I got it wet, it would bleed because it's paint and it does have a grid line on the back so when you're cutting if you need it to be straight you can do so and what I'm doing is I'm trimming um, the edge because I'm going to want to do uh, a match all right I'm going to do it wet on wet in real time in my little TikTok video, my, that was actually my very first application. First try, you guys, I'm not afraid to put it out there, okay? So, paint side down, all right? And I've decided, kind of map this out. Um, let me show you from the top. See, we've mapped out 
Either way, I'm going to be going in at least to a little bit into a third sheet. I could do it this way, or I could do it this way, right? But even with these, I mean, you get a little bit there, but then, you know, neither here nor there. I'm going into a third sheet. All right, so we're going this way. That's what I'm doing. I'm sticking with it. And then what you can do is you can line up another paper. Okay, the patterns should line up, although I used one, so let me just see if I'm on the right page with this. Yes. Okay, so this one we're trimming this side. All right, easy peasy. So I'm ready for that. I'm ready for this. And let's just start. We're going to start doing this. Let me put you to the other screen. All right. So we're going to take that off. You know how to find us on our social and we'll post the banner again. All right. You can see we didn't get full coverage after. That's okay. We're going to get full coverage now because it's going to be a fairly heavy application. Um, let's just... I know I'm getting the full length, so let's just give it a good coat. Don't be shy with this, although I find um, I like the application with the Dixie Belle paints on the wet side and fairly thin. It just, when I did my samples on the um, the TikToky version of this of videos. It was my very first attempt, and I did the floral indigo or indigo floral <laughs> um, with a thin application and kind of more watered down. Even on the back side, I did a, a color blend, so you know that was on the thin side. And then on the rose chintz version. I used thicker paint, especially with the black. And I find and I felt like the application was better with the thinner wet application of the paint. But you're gonna have to be careful because you know you're working with chalk paint, it's gonna want to um, set up fast. So let's just get some paint down, at least get one sheet down, and then we're freshen up our paint. Okay. Okay, here we go. And you can get maybe three applications out of a sheet, which is really cool. It'll just get more and more, I like to say, vintage look to it. All right, so we're going to set this down. Now, I could do two ways of ap applying this. If I wet the back of this, it will um, give me less wrinkles which I tend to like. So let me show you. We're going to, I'm gonna give this a spray. This is the Continuous Fine Mister spray bottle that you can get in our store online. It's through Dixie Bell. It's awesome. All right, if you have two people to help you with rolling this onto your surface, all the better. Because remember, this is going to activate the paint, but you're going to get some mercy pu putting it on. You're just going to want to not take too long. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our other view. All right. And it's sticking to itself. See, if you can roll it on your arm, if you see the video with, with Josie, she'll explain that. And we're going to get some playroom with this. All 
Oh, I didn't get it over to the side enough. That's okay. We'll do a little seam on the side too. Okay. This will give us a smoother application. And then we can cut this little edge so we don't have a wrinkle at the corner. Okay. And then we're going to take our damp sponge and just kind of marry this into the paint. And that's all we have to do for that. Okay, we're going to let these both dry. And then we're going to wet them again. Okay. Make sure we have enough paint down. You know what, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to show you the dry application on the shelf. It won't bother me as much if there's um, a little bit more, um, what's the word, what's the word? Um, disjointed, you know, um, more casual, shabby chic look on the shelf. And it's not bad, it's a cool look. It's just a matter of what, what you're trying to go for. If you're going for the crisp finish look, I would, um, see it's nice to put over your arm. Okay, so that is the paint side. Once you get it wet, it's a little hard to tell. <laughs> just, just saying. Okay, so now we want to kind of, we, we'll, we'll get a little wiggle room on this. And if it doesn't match perfectly, that's okay. But see, when it's wet, we get a little more, literally, wiggle room. We have to add more paint here. Okay. I see how we have our seams matched. Oh, I forgot to cut this edge, didn't I? Let's try to do that on the fly. Everything's an, ad an adventure, you guys. Let me get back up on my little stool. All right, let me show you our top view. Got so excited, I forgot to give you the top view. Okay, and that's not perfect. Doesn't pay to be in a rush. Right. 
And again, if this isn't perfect, we have a way to fix it. Wait till you see. Because remember, it's, it's paint on there. It's paint. Make sure oh, everything gets, hopefully that doesn't blur because now it might be activating the paint. Okay. We're just gonna cut a fine little strip for this edge. You gotta remember to flip it over. All right. We're going to trim our edge. I'm up on a little stool. What's nice about this rose chintz pattern, it appears that every sheet is its own repeat, where I think the um, indigo floral is every other sheet is a match. Just so you know, it's just so you know. Okay, let's add some more paint. go ahead and trim what do I think I need so I think this is plenty it's right. nice about the grid lines And then we can trim a tiny bit for the other side. How about that? Okay, let's put you back on top. I'm going to remember this time. All right. Oh, we're going to wet it. And then we're going to match the pattern. And again, this is going to be a little disconjointed because remember, I kind of messed things up a little bit. It's okay with my cutting prowesses here. Okay, so because it's just this tiny little spot. We're going to have to be a little careful when we really press this down. We're going to cut this little corner here. So I can press one down and then press the other down. Okay. Got a little wrinkle there. Just kind of stretching this out. When it's the wet application, you get more mercy with pulling out these wrinkles. Just remember, time is, is not your friend because it's the paint is starting to activate. Okay, so that is that. We let that dry. Let's see what happens in here. Okay, we're going to save this tiny piece to the end here. Oh, I've got some drips happening here. All right. Now, let's see how this plays out. We do, oh, so close. It doesn't quite make it to the front. All right, but what if we do it? No, it doesn't quite make it to the side. 
So we'll just do a seam on the back side. That way if, if everything isn't 100% perfect, that's okay. And again, we're going to do this dry. The other one we wet the back. This one's going to be a dry application and you're going to see the difference. I wanted you to see like my thought process. I know this is not exciting, but when it's something so new, I'm talking, I'm, ta I'm literally talking through this with, with you guys like watching because at some point you're going to be faced, if you decide to play with these, which I suggest you do, you're going to, um, you're going to want to know what did Linda think at this moment in this little predicament, right? So I must have had a brainiac moment and I don't know, didn't turn my mics on. I know at some point my, my batteries did die, but I am traveling today and I'm putting this video up one way or another. So here you're seeing I have the paper that's dry. I'm placing it. Um, I've got it in pieces in the back. You can see a piece kind of taped in the back wall there. And I'm going to cut a little piece to go around that little sidewall. It's kind of like a puzzle, isn't it? And this is only what I did. You do what you do. But I'm pointing out there's a little square where my little pieces don't join in the back. And I'm thinking that the little square that I'm cutting out will fit in there. And it did. It did a good job of it. So makes me wonder what I was saying in my in my little moment it's kind of like Charlie Chaplin so here I am kind of lining it up and there we go we cut out our little square because I want to match it to the little flower that's on the other seam there and remember, this is a dry application. The paper is very white looking compared to the what we did to the top. We wet the back. This time we didn't. And there we go. Our little square. And it fits nice and snug in that little spot. And I must be all happy with myself. We're going to do a clip, another clip here. I'm going to skip the begin, the whole middle because all you see is my back, my back, back of my head working very hard. And I place, I take the sheets off of there, and I'm setting them down in somewhat of order. And that way, um, I can place them back. So let's skip to the to the end of this clip. And here you see, um, I've got them down and I've wet the paper already. I've already started wetting the paper. This did have more wrinkles in it, but I kept pressing the wrinkles down. And what I noticed, you'll see in a clip later on, I show you kind of the detail. You see what looks like wrinkles, but they really weren't raised. Um, so that was interesting. Once I put varnish on, um, it they pretty much disappeared. In hindsight, um, next time if I see that happening where they're not raised, it's just like an impression of a of a of a wrinkle. I might take like a little piece of a sandpaper and sand the you know the base color. In our case, this juniper green, um, and I think that would do a good job. with a really like fine sandpaper so you don't mess the, mess up the flowers. And it's something you're going to want to do when, you know, all the paint is dry. And I'm just, you know, pressing down, trying to, you know, get the paper as smooth as I can. But you got to be careful that you're not, um, you know, at this point, we're not moving that paper because you could 
we could be activating the paint of the flower on those flowers and they could blur if we move it too much so just be you know mindful of that and Oh, there we go. Now I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to go along the edges because, you know, the sponge is great, but the, um, the rag really can allows me to get right into those edges. I think it really helped. It's certainly much easier to put the, um, the inlays on the top, but it is not hard. It's I'd rather this than stenciling in there. I'll tell you that much. And let's see. Come on, Linda. All right. There we go. Thanks so much. We'll, get, we'll continue on with this video. So here we are. Um, we have everything on. There's little bits and pieces pieced in to just keep things symmetrical. Is that a perfect match? It is not. And if it looks disconjointed when it's pulled off and dry, I can, I can do that after. So we're going to let this sit till it's dry the touch. And we're going to see you at the next clip. And again, remember, seaporium.com it's our social media as well it's all slash seaporium all right here we go again it, i believe it's dry i did do a little strip on the very top and it looks really good i did dampen everything because truth be told between you and me i did a quick video and then um realized i didn't switch the camera angle right and so this is the take two just between you know you and me so um, let's go to this top view. All right. And like I said, it's darker. You didn't get to see the color change of the backing because I had already wet it. And then we're going to take a corner. And it's going to be let's see on the back side, it's kind of sticking. There we go. Ooh, we got a little edge sticking here because we put some paint over the edge there. Got painted in. Oh, I got a little blur. See how that is paint. Okay. We'll just peel this paper off after. There we go. Look at that. And I can don't throw this away now. Do not throw away the, um, the backing here because we can use this again. We're going to try it on the sides of the drawers after. It's going to be a little dicey because we're going to try it, believe it or not, we're going to try it with varnish and see if we can't get it to work just because I don't want to paint the sides of the drawers. Because whenever we do your drawers, you know, it gets um, questionable whenever you um, paint the sides because it's more likely to have, you know, problems where it sticks. And I see a little over paint there. So be mindful of painting over the edge because it wants, the paper doesn't, doesn't want to come up after. It's painted down, I get that now. It's all a learning experience for everybody at this point. I just want to show you, like, it's really, it's, it's all good. Oh, I forgot to wet this side. So I'm just going to, oh, I didn't, but just the end didn't get, I wet it. All right. Let's see. I got a little piece on the side and another little piece. You're not going to be able to see this. I can't get, every, well, I could get this side too, um, but I didn't set up another camera. Oh, it's coming out beautiful. You guys are going to love this. You're going to love, love, love it. All right, let's. This is being a little stubborn over here. But I gotta get this corner up in order to um, get the rest of this paper to release. It's a little resist to it. I find that's when I'm 
having the best luck with it. Okay, you can see we did get a wrinkle in there, but that's only really one wrinkle. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. I can see it, but you know, your angle, who knows? Who knows? All right, again, I'm saving that paper. All right. And then let's get you down to this other angle. Isn't that pretty, you guys? It's so pretty. Is it perfect? No, I have these little bubbles here and there. Um, I don't know why, but I, 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 I'm kind of digging it. I don't like that it's, I, I mean, I, I like that it's not perfect. All right, so again, so that was the wet unwet, and we have like one wrinkle at the top there. This is going to have some more wrinkles in it. But remember, we were doing this on purpose. Let's start from the back. Okay. Just get it nice and damp, but not don't let it sit too long, if possible. I'm going to get it to the edge. That's where I'm going to use this damp rag again. Get it damp so it comes up with the rest of the paper. All right. Okay, there we go. If we can get Joe to stop making some noise over there, we'll be happy. Let's see. One second, Joe, I promise. <laughs> He's saying, shh. All right. I just don't know how much this microphone picks up. All right, so we got this all pretty damp. Let's get this edge. And let's see what happens. Ah. Oh. So far, so good. See, we have, you get a little bit of the, the green of the paint onto there, and that's going to come through. If I were to put a white a background, you know, paint something white now, some of that green in the next application will come through, which is really cool. And the flowers will be lighter, all right? They will be lighter. They won't be as vivid. But again, that's really cool. I don't know if you're able to see, um, but back here there is on the tape some of the paint and some of the, the um, inlay paint is on there. So if you're going to have little oops moments, you know, just be prepared. We might sand that so you don't see it if it were, if it, I taped it. I don't need to, but, um, you know, let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, let's see. It's a little resist pulling. That's okay. The paper's pretty durable. And it's starting to tear here, so it's probably not wet enough here. Okay. Easy peasy. I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I was a little hesitant. You know, this is something totally new. How's it going to work? And I'm loving it. I'm loving that it's a, it is a little unpredictable, but it's still like really cool looking. Let's see. Let's see 
this should be dry. No, oh, yeah, it is dry already. So you gotta be mindful to kind of go back and revisit wetting your, your paper. All right. I do notice, so this is the second time we did the dry application, and maybe it's just the rose chintz. I'll have to try the dry application with the flor uh, indigo floral. Um, but we did get quite a bit of um, like blotchiness in the flowers. I'll try and get a, a good shot of that after. Um, again, it doesn't bother me, and we do have some wrinkles. Um, I'm going to try and get a good shot of that after. We'll move it and we'll put it on the top view. Maybe you'll be able to see it. If you're looking for perfection, um, this might not be your best application. If you're looking for something that's unique um, and textural and um, it's going to be different every time you do it, which makes it very cool. Um, this is really fun to do, and I will definitely be doing a lot of this. All right, and we're just gently, oh, we're tearing a little bit here. And not that it matters because this is a piece that's kind of awkward anyway. So if we're doing another application of this, you know, it's a skinny little piece. I like to keep these um, big sheets intact, okay? Let's pull it from this side. All right, there's another piece. And... All right. So far, so good. Oh, this is so pretty. I don't know if you're able to, to really capture like how cool this is. Let me get this side wet. Let me show you the top view. Um, see, this is where this part ends. Let's see, where are we? Let's see, move it back. Okay, pull it back some more. Yeah, you're not able to see it from that angle. We'll get another video showing you what these all look like. So I'm going to continue getting the rest of these little pieces off, and we'll see you at the next clip. All right, so we are in it to win it. You can see my phone is here. Let's get you the close-up view of what happens here, okay? Um, can you see this is the dry application and it's still damp but you do you do get these appearance of wrinkles it's not raised um, my other see if I did this it kind of disappears okay so I could probably like do a light sand when everything's dry and probably fix a lot of that and then this is the wet application much less wrinkling happening. Just this one right here. And I want to show you like how we're going to blend these. Let me bring my water and here. Here's a good spot. Okay. See how we just did a disconjoined thing here? We're going to activate the paint and just sort of move it over the seam. Give it some time to activate. And I think if I had a, I thought it was a little bit stiffer of a brush, um, I probably would move it faster. So you can just kind of blend things.
We can keep doing that until we don't see a seam. Gonna tap it maybe. There we go. I'm sorry, but my neighbor is talking at the top of our lungs, if you can hear it. Um, and there we go. But see, we just did this. Um, I didn't want to get into a whole nother sheet. And we're going to make this blend work. Okay, we're going to keep adding color here. All right, we're adding color there, and we're going to keep going. Get you another angle here. Oh, I'm going to get, let's see. We still got to get rid of the tape. And see, I'm letting all my little pieces dry flat. And we have this seam. And we're going to kind of marry this together. Oops. Try to do two things at once. So there we go. Not going to be so obvious now, hopefully. Okay. We've done our little touch ups. You don't see the seams, at least not as much. If you're really looking for them, I guess you know where to find them. Um, and then we're just going to do a second coat while this is still drying of our base coat on the sides. And I'm sorry if you hear all kinds of um, rumbling. <laughs> They're, they're awful loud next door. I don't understand what's going on, but um, today's the day that everyone's going to be loud. That's just how the cookie crumbles around here. Um, you know, an occasional motorcycle or all that. So you see, I'm not trying to cover everything because I do want some of this white. If I'm going to have distress, why cover up? all the paint just to sand it back again. So now I'm just kind of covering over where I think I need to. And there's a dog. You can't make this stuff up, people. They wait. They wait for these special days. But that's OK. It's real. It's as real as you can get here. <laughs> And the last clip, I managed to cut it right before the dog started barking with the people coming in the store. Pretty, I'm pretty clever that way. So, all right, that's what we're doing. And I'm going to continue doing what I do. Again, keeping some of, a lot of this, I want it kind of primitive because I kind of like that whole primitive idea with um, this whole rose chintz, right? Maybe I'll cover that one up. And you tell your story as far as how much um, distressing remains. All right. We'll see you at the next clip. All right. So we're the final stages here, you guys. I have about a 50-50 mix of clear coat satin by Dixie Bell with water in this continuous fine mist spray bottle. I don't want you to get jealous. I know it's a hot mess. That's what I'm good at here. All right. We're going to um, do a mist spray over all this just to give it a quick set. And then we'll be able to brush our next coat on. Um, the second coat is pretty dry here. I'm happy with that. And let's just start spraying. All right. And since it's a nice continuous mist, I don't have to break my wrists you know, constantly shaking the, um, 
I guess in retrospect, I would have done my sanding of the chalk paint um, before this step. But that's it. Just want to make sure we get a good coat on it so when I do brush, it will um, dry. What I do notice is the gravity is pulling down on this here. Maybe a little too wet there, so I'm just going to tap that out. And that, that is not me, that's not Joe, that's the dogs grumbling. <laughs> I don't know if this is coming through on the microphone. But it's pretty funny. All right. Just brushing this out. Tapping this. I don't want to blur the flowers. All right. Brushing this out. I could give that a little sand still. That's not going to be a big deal. But note to self, if you're going to do a, a, the, the wet sand or sanding um, of your base coat around it, do it ahead of time. Now I've tried different options for um, spraying. I had this leftover um, spray bottle where you just, you know, you squirt it and it just wasn't coming out nice and even. I am liking the continuous mist sprayer. Um, in hindsight, I think before I kind of went overboard on it, I would have stopped at that next time I do this. And I will um, let that dry and then do another quick light coat of the continuous fine mist with the watery mix and then I feel confident to um, brush on my coat of, of top coat. All right, so I did the one drawer I had sponged on um, the top coat satin and it's just not really coming out. It's still really wet though, so um, I'm going to keep playing with that real quick. Okay, I did give it a quick blow dry. Now you have to be careful because like I said, I, I took this applicator sponge, well the piece of it, and I wiped on the clear coat satin and then I set the, this is the, the paper that we used here, so it's the second application. And you got to be careful because it is a top coat. So when it's dry, it's going to um, want to hold on to the paper. So I waited, I blow dried it just enough for the backing to feel pretty dry. And it felt kind of damp yet still, maybe underneath. And that's when I started pulling. And I guess I would like it better if it were paint, but that doesn't bother me. At all. It's very vintagey looking. So, again, that's a second application of this. And we'll be able to get probably a third application. There's still a lot of color on those flowers. So, and that's with varnish. It's not even supposed to be used with varnish. That's just me being me. Let's start with applying. Um, our top coat. Again, I should have had a palette, but I got a little ahead of myself, so I'm just been kind of like pouring it onto my sponge. And remember, I did a quick spray, so hopefully this holds it. We'll find out. I can also tap this if I want, but let's just push it to the limit and see what happens if we do what like we said. We put a, a the, the spray coat before and let's just see what happens. 
I do see some like little raised um, fibers. I know what the sisters are talking about in their video now, um, especially when I'm at this angle and this light. So what I'll do is after this coat, I will um, just kind of take a, a real fine sandpaper, like a 220 or higher. I have one that's like 300, three something. And I will, um, and I'm gonna do the rest of my piece with this sponge. I prefer using an applicator sponge for my top coats. Um, it just seems to leave less brush strokes. And I like that it goes on thin. I'd rather do more thin coats than um, a thick, brushy finish. All right, so this is what I'm going to continue to do. So far, it's so good. And again, I will just lightly sand over the tops. I did do the other side of that drawer. I'm not going to go grab it now, but it came out just as good, if not maybe a little bit better than the other side. I want to be, remind you, though, that it's a varnish. So I wouldn't expect that we could um, use that again. Um, but I did save the papers, and I'm going to mark them that it was a varnish on our second coat, our second application. So when um, I go try it next time, I will try it knowing that it's a sealer on the paper. But I mean, logic tells me that if I have the sealer imprinted into that, um, that paint inlay, it won't be, it's sealed up the paint onto those sheets. That's just my idea. Um, it's all new. I don't know if any of the other stockists have the answer to that yet. It's all brand new and we're still working together to come up with um, the how everything's working for us all, any new pointers that we're finding, we're, we're sharing that with Iron Orchid Designs along the way. I mean, this has been three years in the making for them, but still, you know, being used by so many different people um, in different paint brands, in different ways, there's gonna be things that come up that maybe wasn't thought of or new tips and tricks that we didn't didn't even know existed. All right, so I think I think I got that coded, right? And again, I'd rather thin coats than thick coats. I like wiping it on. And this is how we put gator hide on. It's, it's amazing, but to really, when you're doing this, you're really working the satin into, well, I mean, I'm using a satin if I was using a gloss or if I was using the flat finish, right? Um, we're really working this top coat, let's put it that way, the top coat into the paint. So it should make the paint itself be very sealed. It's working together. Again, you're going to have to, any paint has got a cure time. It'll be dry to the touch in an hour or less because this first coat is really going to soak into this um, mineral paint, this chalk mineral paint. And isn't this pretty, you guys? Um, so the first coat dries very fast. It just soaks right in there. Second coat, I mean, if this was earlier in the day, um, I would put this on and then do a, 
uh, a second coat before I leave, but it's pretty late. So I'm not going to push it. I'm going to put my second coat on. I'm going to have Joe put the second coat on tomorrow because I'm out of here. I'm going to Salem. I'll post pictures somehow when I can. I'm hoping my stomach holds up, you guys. It's been acting up again. I've been on clear liquids by my choice just to keep myself from getting <laughs> checked into the hospital again, you know. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing to the drawer. All right. And we'll see you in the next All right, you guys. It's This is it. All I've done is I've lightly, very lightly, gone over it with the sandpaper. This is 400 grit. This is hard to find. It's merely meant for furniture refinishing. Um, it's something that you would do in between top coats if you're doing a lot of layers of top coat. And again, this is going to rest for a little while. Joe's going to put a top coat on it. But um, for the purpose of this video, um, I'm going to put this together and we're going to see you at the next clip. That's it. That's that's it in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, it's the Indigo Floral Paint Inlay. All right, don't get it mixed up with the transfer, even though it feels like it is. It's so different. It actually is paint inlaid into paint. It's I can't wait to see what you guys do. I'm already seeing so many great ideas from the from the other um, stockists, and. We so appreciate you spending some time with us, and, and, and I hope I inspire you. Um, you can come and shop online um, or in-store here if you're anywhere near Cape Cod. We'd, we'd so appreciate to see you, and we can give you a little demo. We'd love to do that. You take care. We appreciate your support, and until I see you next time, bye-bye.